We live in a world that is on the move, a world of unprecedented change and uncertainty, and yet also of boundless possibilities and opportunities. And finding a place where young people can feel rooted and belong is absolutely critical. Exploring issues about place, belonging and identity for young people for many years through my research uh, on young people excluded from school or on the margins of school. In my book Leadership of Place where I looked at the importance of place for young people growing up in disadvantaged communities in the UK, uh, the US and South Africa and also through my work with Tio Molina where we've been helping schools think about how to create that sense of belonging in the classroom and the school. It's the art of possibilities, what young people are capable of doing and being and achieving. This video is about the next pieces in the jigsaw. It's about what we've learned and it's about being and becoming a placemaker. We started with the prism of place and belonging and the belief that if schools could see things differently, they would do things differently. When we look at our schools through the prism of place and belonging, we understand more about the lives and experiences of our young people and what troubles them. On this table are, um, is a selection of um, the research that our young researchers have gathered. Um, on this side of the table, we have um, the maps of the school, where the young researchers um, asked their participants to almost dot where they felt that they belonged in one colour, and then dotted where they felt that they didn't belong in another. Some of the children that I asked, um, they said they don't actually feel safe in their classrooms because in their classrooms it's quite crowded and there are a lot of things there which they can bump into. So the research has opened many doors, especially um, for myself as a practitioner. Um, it's really made me aware of um, the difficulties that our children um, face both inside school and outside school. But I think it's been fascinating too, the evolution of student voice and that's been very, very powerful. And I think back a few years where really student voice was largely, shall we have a drinks machine or not have a drinks machine? This has taken the, the dialogue, the debate to a whole new level, which is where students are actually being empowered to ask questions, to investigate um, the reality of the, the learning context, the school, the academy that they're in. And when schools learn to listen to their children and young people, they begin to see things differently and to do things differently. Really important, I believe, to, to research and to find out what's really going on with them, what are their needs, and not just to assume that you know. And that's the great thing about research and, uh, and making it very objective without any any kind of motive for what you're doing you really just want to find some find something out about the class involving newly qualified teachers in research about place and belonging opens their eyes and it helps them realize that creating place and belonging is the key that will unleash the potential of the children and young people in their classrooms one of the things that struck me i said it's been so joyful mm. The way all the bits come together, so you know, the work that Roberta and I have been doing on the poetry performance as a way of showing one way of creating belonging in the classroom. What does it look like when kids are animated and, and they're really engaged? The joy, the joy of engagement, the joy of those um, looking at the faces of the NQTs, looking at our young people at City Hall and the joy mm. on their faces.
you get the joy right, you get the learning right, you get the place right, everything else flows. So me, the word joy, so what other words for you? I would say for me transformation and this goes for children and adults. You know, doing like the first sessions where people look a bit puzzled and kind of thinking, do I have to do this? I've got so much on, especially NQTs thinking, oh, where am I going to fit this in? And children, you know, kind of also looking a bit confused in terms of what it is we want from them and how they will engage. And then seeing them present. We have six areas which we are encouraged to excel at. We asked students of the word, the first word that came up to their mind was... That, that's really fantastic to be part of that transformation. What skills do you think you've gained from becoming a young researcher? I think now I'm more confident than I was before. Not everyone has the same way of learning and not everyone feels the same as we do. I think I like most is how we all work together. I remember from the beginning, I couldn't even imagine myself like doing the whole school assembly or like presenting yeah. Yeah. so many people, but actually doing it well. And I think we should be really proud of that. It's about asking questions about what's happening to our young people in London. I know that our young people are striving to do their best. They're working without limits. And I know that this is the case for so many schools across London. But there are areas that need encouragement, and that's why there's such a programme like this today. The experience of being involved in the research project has also given them the experience and the skills to become involved in other projects within their school, becoming community leaders, becoming change managers, and so on in their schools. So it's not just the business of being involved in a single project and what this single project does, but actually it's also about many of the legacies and the skills that this project has left for them. You know, I'm just thinking about all the people that are actually involved in a school, the pupils, the teachers, the teaching assistants, all of these people, if they are thinking about their school in a different way, it's a place where I go, I feel like I belong, I feel like I can contribute, I feel like what I'm, what I, say is, is, is heard and, you know, all of those things. What a dynamic yeah. kind of, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, wonderful place that would yeah. be. We have an intervention strategy, we have a way of working, mm -hmm. a process, a way of working that is hugely enjoyable, hugely rewarding and will change the culture of your school. But how that will change, we don't have the answer to that because you have the answer because it's your school and it's your students and it's your staff and you're, you're the leaders. It's a very different way, isn't it? But if you view it like that, then the project has no sell-by date. <laughs> it's bound to persist. Yeah, so we can be doing this work for the next oh. 50 years, can we? <laughs>